There's okay. less. We good, Tyler? Yep, you are good to go. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I would like to call to order the April 27th, 2020 meeting of the Sangamon Mass Transit District. Uh, to order, please, could we start with a roll call? Josh, that would be you. Uh, Leslie McCarthy. Present. Joe Dog. I'm here. Sue Dasco. Here. Karen is here. Here. Brian Brewer. Present. Lynn Copeland. Here. Here. Andrew Douglas. Okay, is anybody I missed? Of the trustees, no. Um, one thing, it looks like there's a little bit of a lag from when we talk to when it gets activated. So kind of be cognizant of that. Okay. Josh, All right, folks. Josh, this is Rusty Reed. You need, since it's on video for everyone, for the recording, you need to get everybody's name. Okay. Uh, Rusty Reed. Here. Eric Bush. Present. Steve Shuffle. Here. Thanks, Squires. Here. Melissa Ashford. Here. Tyler Orton. Here. Hi, Josh. This is Stephanie Malcolm. I'm in here with Tyler. Stephanie Malcolm. Here. Is there anybody I missed? I'm sorry if I have. Tim Winthy. Tim Winthy. Here. Okay, I believe roll call is finished. Okay, thanks very much, Josh. And just before we jump into the agenda, I know it's a little bit difficult, and these are extraordinary times that we're all going through. So, uh, I guess on behalf of all the trustees, I'd just like to say to everybody at SMTD, I appreciate the flexibility, the hard work, and everything that we're doing, especially um, frontline drivers, etc. Unprecedented, as I said, but I think everybody's doing a great job and, and we're doing the best that we can providing this vital service that the community needs. So with that being said, let's just jump into the agenda as best we can. First up is the approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of February 24, 2020, but um, Frank, can you Brian, we're going to have to table those. Uh, we were hoping to have the minutes before today, but they are lost in computer land and we will not be able to retrieve them and probably till tomorrow morning. And that's fine. I just didn't have them in my packet. I just want to make sure that we had it re uh, noted in the minutes. So um, next up is the managing director's report. Frank, do you have any comments for us today? Any updates? Uh, other than services down, everything is running very well. A uh, quick thing, I don't want to take this from Melissa. She can give a little more detail, but the buses are being cleaned a minimum of twice a day, if not three times a day. So when you come to Melissa, she can give you more detail. Okay. Anything else? I'm fine, no. Okay. Anybody have any questions or comments for Frank? Uh, just Frank, can you um, email us the minutes? Yes, I will as <laughs> soon as we get them off the laptop tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks, Karen. Let's jump into some reports if we could. The first report is the financial statements and cash disbursements. Eric, would you address that for us, please? Yes, sir. Can everybody hear me? Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, as you would know by the declining cash balances, uh, we've been using quite a bit of cash lately to take care of, obviously, bus purchases and salaries. Uh, unfortunately, what you don't see is we have quite a bit of federal cash that we're getting our ducks in a row to collect here in the next week or two. So while it looks a little dire, uh, we actually are, are, are in fairly good shape with cash. Um, Eric, 
why don't you add on how much money we are going to be getting from the COVID uh, virus, the COVID virus amount of money from the federal government? If I may, can I, I was going to cover that under the budget ordinance discussion. Okay. That's, that's included in the federal money I'm, I'm speaking to that's awaiting collection. We don't have the rules on that yet. So Eric, you're saying even without that, we're doing okay cash wise? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we haven't even had to stage bills or anything like that. So our behavior as far as a good payee and a good, uh, obviously payroll, <laughs> we're, we're making everything okay. Um, all the health insurance payments are up to date. All the dental payments are up to date. Uh, there are no bills behind that I know of. So yes, we're doing okay. Great. All right, very good, Eric. Any other additional questions or comments for Eric at this time? Not hearing any, let's move into some of the committee reports. I know it's been very hard, but I will go through those just, just to make sure we don't have any particular items to address. Is there anything from the finance or the investment committee? Um, I, I don't have anything, uh, Brian. Okay, thanks, Jerry. When? Okay. Let's go ahead and move on to the operations committee. Anything from operations today? Uh, yes, this is Melissa. Uh, we have um, our ridership report for both services. If you'll notice, we've been reporting um, a decrease in ridership. Um, the final few weeks we've been through, we we're averaging a 60% um, decline in both sides, paratransit and fixed route. That um, gradual decline in ridership from the start of the COVID pandemic has resulted in, of course, reductions in service. Um, I'm going to kind of go through a timeline of that to give you guys an update on where we're at with that. Um, this initial response on SMTD's behalf started in uh, early March. Um, approximately March 9th, we increased our daily disinfecting to our buses from a weekly schedule to daily. Uh, by March 12th, ridership had begun to decline enough that uh, UIS Express and trippers were canceled due to school closures, if you recall. Mm -hmm. March 17th, we officially waived all fares for paratransit and fixed route to uh, increase social distancing between operators and passengers, as well as to assist passengers who were experiencing financial hardships due to job loss to still be able to travel to essential needs such as grocery stores, medical care, and such. Uh, by the 23rd of March, we reduced our night service by two hours and we mandated essential travel only by passengers. This was ensuring that we were keeping large groups off of buses that weren't going for essential need tra travel that the governor had mandated. Um, we were seeing less riderships by um, some of the homeless, um, some of those that are just riding because they have nothing to do during the day. They actually come on ride our buses for sightseeing. We were trying to enforce the stay at home rule and, and to further safeguard passengers and operators who had to ride the bus to get to where they needed to go for work and such. By the 30th, we reduced weekday service. Ridership had declined the 30th of March. We reduced weekday service to a Saturday schedule. Um, and we required rear door loading at that time. That further increased social distancing aspect for our operators, as well as passenger exposure to operators as well. By April 4th, Saturdays uh, reduced to an hourly schedule only. We didn't have any 30-minute schedules on Saturdays. This was in, uh, as watching the ridership decline. This is a progression over time. April 15th, we did mandate face coverings for all passengers and operators. Um, all of these changes SMTD made fall in line with um, governmental um, recommendations as well. Um, paratransit uh, is going a step further. Paratransit, um, they are required to wear masks and gloves while they're transporting um, disabled passengers. 
and they are restricted to only having one passenger on board at a time just to reduce um, the potential cross-contamination between passengers uh, because it is such a small vehicle. And we are currently on schedule with uh, operators that we kept on instead of laying off due to um, reduced schedules. We have operators that are working in the garage disinfecting vehicles. We are disinfecting buses at least two times a day. Some of them are getting done three times a day if they're through our group that are deep cleaning after disinfection. Um, so everyone is working and it's part of our COVID response. We have not had to lay anyone off and we're very um, fortunate for that. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we're taking it day by day over here. Um, every overall face covering requirements and things like that have been pretty well received with our passengers. We have some disgruntled. I think that's just the, the general public view on whether they're needed or not, but we feel we're doing everything we can to safeguard passengers and operators alike. And it's went over pretty well. I've been down at the transfer center a lot helping make sure all these changes went smoothly. And um, I think everyone's pretty well on board with it. We've distributed masks to passengers just as well as operators. We had a lot donated from the community. Um, as you guys may or may not be aware, we had a hard time getting PPE, the personal protective equipment for our staff, simply because we're not emergency medical personnel. Um, we had some donations from the community, from different organizations, as well as the health department that really helped us get some of these um, actions we've taken going. So we're we're in a good spot right now, I think. Okay, very and I know good. that's a lot. <laughs> Sorry. No, that was a fantastic report, Melissa. Yeah. Okay. Any questions or comments for operations? I know there's a lot of moving parts there and we've changed a lot of policies and initiatives and procedures that have been put in place. I guess I would just say if you would pass along to everybody there that uh, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, we appreciate them being out in the front line, especially the operators and everything that we've done. Um, a lot of common sense has gone into this and uh, I'm proud that you guys are making the right decisions on behalf of our ridership and the community. So great job. Thank you. I'll make sure I pass it along. Okay. All right, how about the administration committee? Is there anything from administration today? I'd just like to echo everyone's thank you to the administration, because you're the ones that have had to make a lot of the tough decisions um, and make sure they're carried out also. So I know it's it's just been so weird for all of us to go yeah. through this. So um on behalf of all the board i know that we really appreciate the extra effort you've had to put in on the last two months so thank you absolutely um well i have a little something to kind of add at that point we've also had a, a number of our well not a number we've had a couple of our drivers retire the union president and uh ray gladden ray was a driver before, uh, first off winningham Michael was our union president. He'd been here a little over 20 years. Ray Gladden came to us. He used to be a driver for Federal Express. And he was telling me before he left that he drove for 42 years. And he never had an accident. Wow. wow. Federal Express, SMTD, and another trucking company. Wow. So our, I think he was, I should take that back. Somebody, I think, hit him once here, but he caused no wrecks himself. Wow. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to put this up and show you guys, this is what we've been giving them, but we can't give it to them. I can't get them engraved, obviously, until this is over, so. Oh, it's how a, nice. It's, Very nice. It's a piece of Lucite, and the three things in there are our, our style of um, um, tokens. tokens, yes. And the tokens are, um, boy, I'm trying to, Anyway, I'm trying to get them so you can see them. The tokens are the um, uh, the styles of trans are, are tokens from when we were the Springfield Transit Company. So that's what everybody that's would neat. be getting. And that's then their, their names would be engraved in here with their years of service. Cool. Mm -hmm. Are there, Frank? Pardon me. Hired. 
uh, of Michael Winningham, union president, and Ray Gladden, one of our drivers. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Very good. And hopefully when some of this is behind us, we'll be able to get, um, I think it'd be nice to have just some type of gathering picnic or cookout that we've had before in the past for everybody, pull everybody together. So maybe we can call that back at that time, but we'll work towards that. And Frank, I'll have to admit, you must be a pro at the Zoom meeting with the Galaxy background and that effect <laughs> that they had. Yeah, I was impressed with that too. <laughs> he looks like he's like up. Them. Thanks. I feel like I'm Carl Sagan, and this <laughs> is where we are, right there. Oh, I love it. A little bit of humor. Well, <laughs> well deserved. Okay, I know uh, Jason and Pete weren't on, but was there anything from the Planning Commission or the Disabled Person Advisory Committee, Frank? No. Um, the Planning Commission has not been meeting. We did do the, the, rural, the subcommittee a meeting that's on Wednesdays once a month at 9 30 the same in the same format so everybody is going to zoom or phone in message things per the governor's executive order seven number seven okay Frank right. I wanted Great. to add the uh, curb your car would usually be going on in May and that committee has decided to put everything off uh, probably for the year they may try to do um, some biking and uh, commuting stuff in the summertime, but not as uh, formal and as organized as they've done in the past. So I know that that's disappointing to some of those folks, but uh, we would usually come to the board and ask for free rides and uh, those kind of things to participate in that, but that's being put off for a year. Okay. Thanks, Steve. All right, then. Let's go ahead and jump into some new business. We have a couple items there. First up is the uh, placement of the fiscal year 2021 budget ordinance. Eric, could you address that for us, please? Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, what we have prepared in front of you today is the, essentially the financial plan for July 1st of this year through June 30th of next year. We're looking at an $18 million operating budget request. Uh, and this is part and parcel what we submit to the state for our downstate operating assistance program. Um, we are presenting a full service budget uh, as if, I guess I could say nothing had happened, um, but with full service through the work weekday and weekend schedules, fully staffed. Um, I've got some assumptions in there for health insurance increases as well as uh, some commodity price decreases. So I think on balance, uh, um, if we were to go back to full service July 1st, this is what it would look like. Well, I think that's the approach that everybody would like to take. So um, I think you're correct in all those assumptions. So good job there. Did everybody get a chance to read through our assumptions, strategy, and tactics portion of the transmittal? I did. Yes. Okay. Yes. I did. Yes. Those yeah. were our essentially guiding principles uh, in its development. So if there's any questions from there, I'm, I'm happy, or Tim or I are both happy to entertain any questions. Yes. Any questions or comments for Eric? Okay. Uh, the federal piece that uh, was spoke to earlier, uh, we did receive notice fairly quickly uh, that SMTD is the recipient of 7.63 million in CARES Act funding. Uh, the CARES Act was the first uh, stimulus bill that Congress passed uh, that allowed for both uh, expanded leave programs and initial transportation responses. Uh, from that 2.6 billion, uh, we got uh, uh, the, the $7 million piece. Uh, we're daily uh, being kept up to speed with IDOT and uh, through our grants management function on rules being developed on how we're going to draw this money down. But essentially, it'll be on our balance sheet come the end of the fiscal year. Uh, and that's where that, that spike essentially in federal subsidy will come from. It will show up on the balance sheet, but it does not show up in the budget. Uh, and the reason I didn't show it as a budgeted item is because the money is intended to supplant uh, activities either foregone or driven by the response to the pandemic, which means the fair revenue that we're not 
collecting right now is actually being collected based on accounting records that we'll be able to use to estimate what the collections would have been, and then that'll be a federal claim. That's on the revenue side. As men, Melissa mentioned earlier, we're still fully staffed, even though we're on a Saturday schedule. Um, those wages will bring down that $7.6 million as well. Now, will it all, it, it won't all get done, obviously, this fiscal year. What portion will be moving over into fiscal year 21 will be in you know, into, as we experience it, because this is a 100% reimbursement grant, as we experience our operating, we qualify for the reimbursement. Um, seven point, I'm, uh, I was just ahead, gonna Eric. say the 7.6 million is uh, roughly a third of our budget. It's a substantial and material impact for sure. Um, we just haven't really sized the wage impacts against it yet or the fair revenue lost yet. That's May I, I was gonna add one thing. Is that okay, Eric? Yes, sir, I'm done. Okay. When we were made aware of this money, we have, Steve and I talked, uh, Melissa and I talked, we all talked about it at length. And I've made the decision that this money from the federal government can be used for some capital projects However, I've decided that this money will be used only to keep everybody at SMTD working. We're not gonna lay anybody off. We're not gonna furlough anybody. We've got this money and we will keep them working as long as we possibly can. I hope that's okay with you guys. That's great. That's fine. We're not laying anybody off. There's, we're not gonna buy one thing with that money other than to make sure everybody is working and probably fifty, sixty thousand dollars of that will go for COVID things like masks and gloves and sanitizer that we're going to hoard for the next time a flu pandemic like this or COVID nineteen twenty two comes around. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, sounds like you have your priorities just right. Thank you, Frank. Yes, ma'am. Can we? Um, can we provide enough work for them to do so they're feeling like they're continuing to add? Yes, right now we have some of the extra drivers. They are in the garage helping clean the buses the two to three times a day. Okay. What and other kinds of employees besides the drivers are involved? With cleaning the buses? Oh, no in in the um employees that need something else to do um actually we, that, is there anyone in that boat um no we have a four or five drivers on standby or backup and um we will um and then the rest of them are out cleaning buses uh, melissa you can jump in if i'm missing something on what other things you have them assigned to uh, Karen, our, to answer your question, um, operators, of course, are the ones who we have the most excess right. of. That's where the extra shifts are scheduled um, in the garage cleaning uh, vehicles. Paratransit drivers who are extra as well as mainline that are extra are out there doing extra deep cleaning um, of disinfected vehicles. We have a staff of them, approximately 12 and almost 20 out there at a time. Um, the other ones who are on report on standby are on standby for open work. You got operators who may call in, they're still taking vacations, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, we also have those operators available. If we do see a rise in operators out sick, um, so far we've been really lucky with uh, everyone staying healthy. Um, but we have the spare drivers ready to go out on the road. We will pull the ones from the garage last to cover extra work. Oh. Other staff that are that um, you may be considering are dispatchers, um, road supervisors. Their work is static. Um, they have payrolls and count sheets, and all their their office work is still there, regardless of how many buses are out on the road. Phones still ring, that kind of thing. So they weren't impacted by the schedule that's out there. 
Um, overtime is, is, is really reduced, so there's no extra work on Saturdays. They are taking a day off during the week if they do work Saturday, that kind of thing. Um, so there is some reduction in hours there, but they're still getting their full hourly, you know, 40 hours for the week. Yeah. There's no good. overtime. Thank you very much. Um, that's very good. I think it's important that they all realize that they're adding to what we're going through right now and, and needed that we're not, you know, there is work for them to do. Yeah, there definitely is. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Do you have it? Okay. Very good. If there's no additional comments or questions, there, then I'll offer a motion for the budget ordinance. And I believe in your packets, um, they had, we've already got a nice motion spelled out there. If somebody wants to tackle that, please. Okay, I'll, I'll take a run at it. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Um, so I'm, I'm looking on my iPhone at the, um, if this is correct. I move that we accept the FY21 operating budget um, request. Is that proper or is this? Just a motion to place it on file. Right. I move that we put the operating budget for FY21 on file. This is when I second. Okay, we have a first and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anybody opposed? Okay, very good. So we have, we have approval to move forward with the budget and the appropriations ordinance to be filed for the upcoming fiscal year, and then we'll move towards our um, regular meetings and the public hearing. So great work to Eric and the team. A lot of hard work went into that, and we appreciate all your efforts. And um, we have a number of number of items to ratify. Obviously, there's been uh, business continues to go on before um, we met today. So I think I will lump all these together, and we can address them individually. But we just need to ratify uh, a couple different things that we've already done. So. Eric or Stephanie, is there anything that you want to add to some of the uh, services or, um, you know, contracts that we've already approved? I would just note that you have the engagement letter from Sikich, uh, who were requesting be approved as the new audit firm. And uh, that would be the only difference between the other ratifications that you're able to see that communication from the auditors to you since they report to you. Okay. Rusty, can we just do a, uh, all right, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna ask Rusty if we could do a motion to ratify, um, you know, the four different items that we've already approved or do we need to uh, do them individually? Were they approved at a previous meeting? When you, when you say they're already approved? Yes, yeah. well, Wait, no, well, they were through all... email. It was through email. Yeah, let's, we're just let's, do them, let's do them one at a time. Okay. All right, then. Um, well, first up, Eric mentioned the award of the audit services, so I'll look for a motion to ratify that. I move to ratify the, the audits, the notice to award audit services. I second. This is Sue. Actually, to sick each. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the addition. So we have a first and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Very good. We have approval to move with sickage for our audit services going forward. Um, Thank you. Next item to ratify was uniform services. I believe that was Sintas. Can I get a motion there? 
I'll move that we award our uh, contract for uniform services to CentOS. Second. Okay, first and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, we have approval or we have ratification of the CentOS contract. It was uh, $16,273.40 for five years. Um, next item to ratify was uh, the Henson Robinson, Robinson contract. I think everybody's seen that, but I'll look for a motion there. I make a motion that we approve the Henson Robinson contract. Second. Okay, first and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Very good. So we have ratification of the Henson Robinson contract for uh, three years with a two year additional option on the back end of that. And the last item that we had worked on that we need to ratify is the HVAC service uh, expenditure. And I will look for a motion there. I'll make a motion that we approve the contract for HVAC services in the amount of, somebody will have to help me fill that out, that blank. $56,820 for alpha controls and services. Yes. Second. Okay, we have a first and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed there? Very good. So we have ratification of alpha controls expenditure. And the last item under new business, um, we have some surplus assets that we need to discuss. And Eric, I will allow you to address that, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is just, these are items from old buses that have already been sold off uh, that have just been sitting around the gar uh, garage. Uh, we're trying to clean up space and as we have it available, both manpower to do it. And uh, these are no longer needed items that have no uh, resale value. Okay. Refresh uh, me. How do we do that? Do we send them into the state pool of items or how do the, we dispose of them? The, there, it depends on the item. Uh, the, once the board declares it surplus, we make sure the accounting records are updated and all the fixed assets are adjusted as necessary. Um, everything is fully depreciated if it's on the fixed asset list. From there, if it's an electronic or other type, we, we, we will use the state to auction those off or we'll do a silent auction internally. Uh, normally the board advises us to use the uh, highest uh, recapture uh, avenue. So there's a number of different ways we could auction, give to the state, uh, sell to employees uh, or salvage. A lot of these items are just old junk. Um, there's, it, it, it's almost the, worth more just to throw it out than to try and sell it. Uh, in some cases, there's old office mats uh, that are bought in, in lots, things like that, signposts. Um, just if they were of value, we would auction them either internally or with the state. Sorry for the long answer. I think you sent a photo, so I'm sure looking at the photo, we all agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So do we make a motion on this, Brian? Yeah, I'll, I'll look for somebody to make a motion to uh, declare the equipment listed in that inventory is obsolete surplus. This is to make a motion to accept staff's recommendations and declare the equipment listed in the attached inventory is obsolete surplus and direct staff to dispose of it in the most economical method available. Second. Very good. We have a first and second. All those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Very good approval to move forward with that exercise. So, so I think that's it for new business. Um, I guess I will call for public comments since that's required. Brian, I think uh, we need to note for the record, unless I missed it, that Sandra joined us after the roll call. Yes. Oh, is she on? Yes. Did you catch the timestamp, Steve? Sandra, what time did you join us? Oh, I don't know. Not, um, I had a meeting, so I would say 4.30 maybe. I don't really know. I mean, five, about, four, about 15 minutes ago. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe about 15 minutes ago, I think, I would say. 
Okay. Or not really sure because I, I just got another call for work. I don't know no, what time. I, yeah. I think it was about 10 to, 10 to 5. Okay. I wasn't sure. Okay. No, very good. I, and I, I didn't hear you sneak on, so I'm glad you were able to join us and I hope you're doing well. Good. Thank you. Or okay. Good. Okay. Not hearing any public comments, does any, anybody on the call today have any additional comments for the good of the group or anything you'd like to discuss or just I, make a comment that is I on? I don't know if I missed it. Can you hear me? Yes. I, I yes. just want to say that I want to just say that I've been reading about and hearing about the um, buses and I've had calls and they were really, you know, they were glad from what all the things that they've done about making them wear masks and the, they're really they're comfortable really comfortable about that and i'm appreciative for all the work that we've done yep no well said melissa had a nice report she gave us a timeline and uh some of the the things that were initiated along the way so uh, just to yeah, follow they're up they're very yes. happy about it very well okay anybody else have any additional comments any additional business to discuss if not, I'll just say um, great job to the uh, IT crew for getting this organized. We made it through, folks. Pat yourself yeah. on the back. Gave it. <laughs> nice <laughs> job. Um, everybody continues to work hard in, in the face of a lot of adversity and trying times. I'm really proud to be associated with SMTD, and it's times like this where, um, you know, you take advantage to do the best that you can, but uh, it's the little things that really matter. And I really appreciate working with each and every one of you. So everybody, please stay safe, stay healthy with your families. This too shall pass and we'll be back together soon. So um, Frank, if there's anything else, please contact us individually. But other than that, um, everybody stay well and I will look for a motion to adjourn. Um, before, you, before we adjourn, um, our plan is to have our meeting as normal in, in the month of May. However, that's all subject to what the governor decides to, to direct. So we plan for May, but we may be here just like this again. So FYI. Okay. okay. All righty. Thank you. All right, then. Thanks, Frank. Is there a motion to adjourn? I make that motion. Second. Second. Okay. First and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Very good. The meeting's adjourned. So everybody, thanks very much. And again, stay Bye. healthy. We'll see you. Everybody later. stay safe. Bye. Thank Thank you. You. Bye. 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 Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.